that we should just <coughs> do the order of adjournment. Are you ready for the mayor's set? Good evening. The hour being 7.05.09 on Hi. April 27, 2020. Uh, I'd like to call to order the city council meeting um, here at City Hall. Um, before we start, I do want to uh, read an introduction for electronic meetings. As mayor of the city of Laconia, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis, and in accordance with Governor Zanunu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that we are, A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone, with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing the Zoom platform for this electronic meeting. All council members have the ability to communicate during this meeting through the Zoom platform, and the public has access to watch the live YouTube video at https colon backslash backslash www.youtube.com backslash Laconia NH. Listen to this meeting through dialing the following phone, number 1312-626-6799, or participate by the Zoom app, webinar ID 234-032-584, password 967-814. B, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting using Zoom and instructions are provided on the City of Laconia's website at www.laconianh.gov. Providing a mechanism for the public to, al to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please call five, Four three eight seven seven extension two forty nine or email at cityclerk at laconianh.gov. Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at that time. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Also, because there is a, an issue with the video this evening, if and when uh, a counselor speaks up, would they please identify themselves uh, prior to speaking? And also, while you are not speaking, make sure to hit the mute button, which is in the lower left-hand corner of your screen so we don't get any background noise. So let's uh, start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, also please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. I'd ask the city clerk to take the roll. Councilor Deeney? Yes, and I'm alone. Anyone? Okay. Councilor Bounds? Present. Councilor Whitman? Present and alone. Thank you. Councillor Haynes? Here. Councillor Hamill? Present and alone. Thank you. Councillor Fouch? Here and alone. Thank you. Mayor Hosmer? Present. Uh, next, I would uh, ask Councillor Haynes to lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll also note that joined at the council table this evening at City Hall 
is City Clerk Cheryl Hebert, who will be taking the minutes. We're also joined by City Finance Manager Glenn Smith, as well as um, City Manager Scott Myers. Under number seven on our agenda, uh, which is the acceptance of minutes from previous meetings. Uh, minutes of the our meeting, the city council meeting of April 13th, 2020 um, have been prepared and submitted by Cheryl Clerk, uh, Cheryl Hebert, the city clerk, with no corrections or changes submitted to the clerk. The minutes will be accepted as distributed. Under eight consent and action items, 8A is the acceptance of unanticipated funds uh, directed to the Laconia Fire Department community group from Walmart. Uh, this is a, um, Laconia Fire Department has applied for and been approved to receive a community grant from Walmart in the amount of $2,500. This money will be used to complete complete the purchase of specialized medical equipment for the third of the three ambulances. This report was submitted by Chief Kirk Biotti and per the res city resolution 2019-24, a resolution relative to the acceptance and expenditure of unanticipated funds made available during the fiscal year per RSA 31 colon 95-B in an amount less than 2000 must be brought to a vote. So I'll be asking for, looking for a motion to accept the $2,500 Walmart community grant for the purchase of specialized equipment, medical equipment, and to be placed on the ambulance. I'll make a motion. So made by Councillor Mark Haynes, seconded by Councillor David Bounds. Any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, hearing none, I'll ask the... City Clerk to call the roll on this. Councilor Tierney? Yes. Councilor Bounds? Yes. Councilor Whitman? Yes. Councilor Haynes? Yes. Councilor Hamill? Yes. Councilor Felich? Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Thank you, Councilors. Moving to number nine. Uh, on our agenda this evening, citizens comments for matters not on the agenda. Uh, if you have something you'd like to address the mayor or the city council about, uh, you could raise your hand now. Uh, our IT director here will see that you have requested an opportunity to speak and you may be heard. So these is, this is for items not on tonight's agenda. Mr. Mayor, there's a Jose D'Amatos who's raised his hand. Thank you. Mr. D'Amatos, would you uh, state your name, your address? Uh, apparently his hand is no longer raised. Okay. And no other hands are raised. Mr. D'Amatos, if you raise your hand a little later, I'm oh, sure we can find excuse some Excuse me, He's, let's try this again. Okay, sorry about that. You, you, you unmuted me. So that worked out well, thank you. I'd like to thank, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Councilor Hamill at the end of last uh, meeting, uh, offering the property tax relief for taxpayers, perhaps uh, three months uh, with no interest and penalties, uh, which would really help a lot uh, with uh, no revenue probably until June and giving us the three months. I was wondering if uh, anything was acted on that. I didn't see it on tonight's agenda. 
Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. D'Amatos. From what I understand from the city manager, Mr. Myers, we're still awaiting information from the state. Is that correct? And certainly get it to you and get it out to the public as soon as we can. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Is that it? And no other people seeking to speak. No other hands raised, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, moving on right now to number 13A is public hearing for a proposed amendment of the city code, charter 235, zoning, amending the table of permitted uses and table of dimensional requirements. Um, this has to do with our short-term lodging uh, proposal and uh, uh, zoning ordinances. Notice of this public hearing was made available in the April 17th, 2020 edition of the Laconia Daily Sun and posted at Laconia City Hall Community Center and at SAU. Um, once the once the once the uh, public hearing has taken place, we will address it. We'll take it up under unfinished business later on during the uh, council meeting this evening. So at seven sixteen forty one, I will open the public hearing uh, for proposed amendments of Chapter two thirty five zoning tables. This would be the opportunity for anyone in the public who would like to speak about it or for any counselors to speak up now. I think when you're taking the microphones off, the microphone is causing static. Just kind of hold the microphone. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, sir. None of the participants has raised their hand to speak. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So I will close the public hearing at 717 and 26 seconds. This takes us right along to the, uh, the mayor's report. We got there quickly, didn't we? I did have just a couple of things uh, I wanted to to speak about tonight. Um, and and uh, first and foremost, as uh, many of you are aware, uh, the Weir's Beach Bridge Project, uh, which had been delayed for a short period of time uh, through the persistence of the city manager and, uh, uh, and uh, the state government, we were able to get that the project back on track and get the uh, prefabricated material from the state of Vermont, out of Vermont and here to Laconia. So we will, that project started today. Uh, it will be somewhat of an inconvenience for those wanting to cross over the Weir's Beach Bridge, uh, but certainly with the reduced traffic and uh, it seems to be uh, uh, probably as good a time to get it done right now as any. So um, it is about a 30 day project, correct Mr. Myers here, that this will be shut down. So uh, hopefully that you'll bear with us here and uh, we'll have a brand new bridge in the next 30 days or so. Um, secondly, I mentioned at the last meeting, it is still critically important that uh, we uh, fill out our 2020 census, uh, particularly important as it comes to our legislative representation, both in the house here in New Hampshire, as well as the Congress. So we were lagging other communities in the state as far as uh, filling it out. So hopefully we can um, increase the, the response rate to that. Many of you may be aware that the emergency order that uh, was issued by the governor has been extended through uh, May 15th. That's May 15th we have it extended to and that's as uh, far ahead as we can, we can predict what's going to happen. Um, I, I will also let you know that it was an interesting document that came out, I think it was last week, maybe two weeks ago now, almost two weeks ago, from the Secretary of State and the Attorney General regarding our elections uh, in the city in both uh, September, which is the primary, as well as our November elections. 
Um, and to quote the directions, it has to do with absentee ball balloting and the availability of absentee ballots to people, for people. Uh, and I'll quote, absentee voting is permitted in any circumstance where the voter is under medical advice, whether it's individualized advice or general advice to the public to avoid being in places like a polling place. So that pretty much opens up if there's a reason that you, you either are getting direct advice from a doctor, it seems to me, to not be in a public place, or whether you are just uh, processing information as it's made available and trying to steer clear of uh, others uh, and maintain safe spacing, that you would qualify for an absentee ballot. I'm sure there'll be additional information on the city website and any questions can be directed towards our very able <laughs> city clerk, Cheryl Hebert. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, you know, I, I, uh, we, we are certainly learning to adjust to uh, these very challenging times and um, in facing a, a pandemic here of, of uncertain future, as well as an economic downturn that's left many people um, uh, hurting. And, uh, you know, there's the, one of the upsides of, of working from home and having uh, less commuting time and there's probably an opportunity to do a little more reading and, and I can't help but come across some things that I read and think of how applicable they are today. And I just thought I'd share just very briefly a quote from John F. Kennedy in October, 1962 at the height of the Cuban Missile Pr Crisis. Um, and I'll quote, when he said to United States citizens, my fellow citizens, let no one doubt that this is a difficult and dangerous effort which we have set out. No one can see precisely what course it will take or what costs will be incurred. Many months of sacrifice and self-discipline lie ahead. Months in which both our patience and our will will be tested. Months in which many threats and denunciations will keep us aware of our dangers. Well, certainly in this time, um, it, we all may be tempted to disregard some of the social isolation and desperate to get back to a, a more normal way of life. Uh, but I do think it's important that we remember that the CDC directives, um, you know, our, our city our, our city and our county are in relatively good shape. And I think that's not only because we've, our population is spread out a bit, uh, but we've taken the pandemic seriously. So I would encourage all of us to remain focused on what is keeping us safe. And I, I wanna say, um, Thank you again to our police, to our firefighters, our paramedics, our teachers, our city hall employees, including those with us here tonight at city hall, to our DPW workers who are out there, to our docs and our nurses and the administrators, uh, the support staffs that are supporting all the essential employees. And I would just like to conclude this in saying, you know, you are the folks that are the heroes. You probably don't think of yourself as such, uh, but those of us who get to perhaps stay home and work from home, and hope for better days as we get through this. I just want to say your heroes to us and thank you. That will conclude my comments, um, mayor's comments this evening. This evening, excuse me. So uh, I'd like to move on to committee reports. I see Councillor Bounds, excuse me, with his hand up. I'd like to acknowledge him. I'd just like to append to your report with respect to absentee ballots, that I don't think there will be a requirement that you provide some kind of medical authorization. Uh, you simply have to state that you're unavailable, um, come to the polls on, on that particular day. And everybody should know that, that they don't have to scramble for some kind of authorization. It's just self-reporting uh, obligation, right? Correct, you fill out an absentee ballot request and there's a spot on there that you'll check off on the reason why you want that ballot. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Browns. So uh, again, continuing on to committee reports uh, and I'll keep my eye on our IT director tonight and see if there are, uh, are any committee reports, any hands raised from councillors. Uh, there are not the councillors, I believe, can unmute themselves. Okay. Need to speak or desire to speak. 
Okay, very good. Our IT manager tonight is actually finance manager, uh, finance director, Glenn Smith. So he's wearing dual hats tonight. Moving on from committee reports, uh, liaison reports, number 17 on our agenda. Do we have any liaison reports this evening? Seeing none, Director Smith? Uh, there are none. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I look at this screen, there's only there are only two pictures uh, on my screen tonight. Uh, one of um, Glenn Smith and the second one of <coughs> uh, um, State Representative Charlie St. Clair. It's a dashing picture, if I do say so. Hey, Glenn, I do have. Um, and we're moving on to number 18 here. Well, Citizens know. request a comment on current agenda items. And I think Representative <laughs> St. Clair is, uh, is anxious to, to check in with us. Excuse me, Ms. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Councilor Hamill was trying to say. Yes, uh, I do have something on the liaison, uh, Mayor. Um, I, I couldn't. I had a hard time getting to the mute button there. <laughs> but uh, just to let you know a little bit more about the theater. Uh, things are still going on as uh, as planned. Uh, uh, pretty much the last of the mediation was uh, hopefully completed uh, last week. Uh, the, they uh, were working in the uh, entryway to the Colonial. That was kind of the last hot spot. Unless there's something undiscovered, hopefully that's the end of that. Uh, and if you notice, the sidewalk out front of the theater has been removed. Uh, they've come up with a design to put pavers there for people who contribute. Uh, so uh, the, the, the uh, schematic of what that's gonna look like uh, is pretty nice. And then also, if you notice, Canal Street has had quite a bit of uh, digging there, and that's the water sewer pipes uh, going into the building. So those have been replaced, and there's just continuous uh, work being done on the frescoes and on the outside of the building. So as I said, uh, things are progressing, and uh, it's looking good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamill. Um, exciting, de exciting days indeed uh, in regards to the theater. Any other liaison reports? Uh, no one else is seeking to speak. Terrific. So let's uh, move on to number 18, which is citizens request to comment on current agenda items. And once again, I'll acknowledge State Representative Charlie St. Clair. Here. Am I loud and clear right now? I am. Okay. Um, obviously, I'm here to uh, talk about Motorcycle Week. Uh, it, we're going to make our decision, the board will, on uh, Thursday of this week. Uh, that being said, if we end up uh, postponing Motorcycle Week, we uh, have been talking about the dates of August 22nd through the 30th. Um, as I've spoken to a few of you, uh, Traditionally, and all traditions are all out the window this year, but traditionally that's been a slow week in the summer, the last uh, the week in the last week in the summer, although this year it's Labor Day is a week later, of course. Um, but we'd like to move the like to move the rally to those dates, the 22nd through the 30th. And I know there's been um, a few a few people that have not been thrilled with that with that choice, but I'm under the experience that no matter what choice we make, someone will be unhappy with it. Uh, I know I have not spoken to the Mount Washington personally. Uh, I understand they have some concerns and we certainly can work those concerns out with regards to if they have buses or some VIP people they need to get down through, through Lakeside Avenue. We, as you know, have two lanes of traffic so we can um, get them down the, the right side of the street to bring them right in front of the uh, the ship's building there to either load or unload and then they can ex exit the weirs for parking uh, for people that want to drive to the weirs and park uh, of course they have their parking lot and we have a, a, a several other parking lots in the back there 
uh, off uh, Tower Street or uh, Doe Avenue. And then we have um, other auxiliary parking lots uh, further out. And the other thing about August is that the train runs uh, every day. And I did get a call from uh, the railroad uh, telling me that they would be able to work with this. Uh, they actually sell tickets that week in conjunction with the, with the ship uh, for uh, people that they call it, I guess, uh, train and ship. They can, they can have like a joint ticket thing there. So hopefully that would work out good too. Is, that, is everybody all right? Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Councillor Cheney, can you mute your microphone, please? Of course, a lot of rallies have been uh, pushed back into the summer this year. Um, Americade, which is in New York, and normally I know Councillor Hammer goes goes to that normally. Uh, that's going to be in July, um, as of right now. And a couple of the other rallies around the, the Northeast have been pushed into July uh, or into August. Um, again, I, at this time, that seems to be the, the best date. If at the beginning of August, and, and God help us, but if things haven't changed by the get, beginning of August, we would certainly uh, <laughs> be talking to you again about moving the uh, rally uh, further out. Um, but. Hopefully that doesn't happen because September would be all bets are off with uh, not only the climate, but other activities that are going around. And we have a very limited window of uh, being able to do something in September because of other rallies that are happening, uh, not only nationwide, but on the East Coast. And we have to be we have to be thinking about that, too. If I'll take any questions, if anybody's got any. I, I, why I'm thinking about it. I did talk to uh, both the fire chief and the police chief about these dates too, and uh, everybody was on board with this. And I believe the, uh, well, I know about the fire chief, but I, I believe uh, Chief Canfield might be watching tonight. So if he has any uh, issues or anything, he can certainly pipe in. I think that's about it. I, I know I had questions about vendors. We're expecting a good turnout of vendors because the vendors have been taking a beating this spring with most of the all the rallies around the country being canceled. So we expect a good turnout from, from, uh, from the vendors. We'll certainly have our work cut out for us by getting uh, word out of the new dates. Uh, and we can do that obviously through social media and, and uh, getting the word out to uh, certain motorcycle publications. Representative St. Clair, uh, somebody had reached out, a couple of people have reached out in regards to the proximity of the Sturgis rally, and there would only be a week or so between rallies and worried that that would affect you. It, 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 but uh, I'm sure you've thought about it, and is that a concern for you? Uh, <laughs> I can't get used to you calling me Representative St. Clair. Charlie would be funny. Um, uh, it, it, it definitely is not the best of uh, scenarios as a week, week apart, but I've talked to not only our sponsors, who I have great concern about, uh, Progressive and uh, AMS Oil and um, uh, Motorcycle, uh, well, I was thinking American Iron, but they've changed their name. But in any event, I've, I've talked to them and uh, they said that it'll be, it'll be interesting, but they'll, they'll be here. Uh, and then the other vendors I've spoken to have all said the same thing. They're not going to miss it because they can't afford to. So they would pack up, uh, hit the road on Monday and be here by probably Thursday. And, and that works out just great. And other, other vendors that don't go to Sturgis uh, would, would be here in any, in any event to uh, set up. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from counselors? Uh, Councilor yes. Lippman has his hand up. Councillor Lippman, uh, was acknowledged? Yes, uh, Charlie, um, have you had uh, conversations yet with uh, state officials about uh, the certainty of which that date is? There's one question I have, and I have two more after that. I, I didn't understand the uh, question, Councillor. The, the issue of when to have the event is in part decided by your, your board in part decided by the city council, but probably above all that is 
whether the state itself, given the COVID-19 situation, um, would give you the okay to broadcast that as a date at this point is my question. Well, we would, we, we would broadcast it, uh, Councillor, as a tentative date, much like the other rallies uh, for July have done. Uh, and we would certainly be waiting to hear uh, from, from the governor's office if he was to say at some point, you know what, guys, uh, that's just not going to work out. Uh, we can certainly, we would deal with that at that time. That, that wouldn't be an issue. I did talk to a few people down in Concord and their, their main concern was, was that we we're able to have this event because it means a lot to the state coffers, obviously uh, through uh, the various taxes that they raise money and, and take advantage of the people coming in here. But again, and, and, and I did talk to uh, somebody in the state police and uh, they're waiting to see obviously how everything shakes out. Uh, but they agreed with with our uh, contention that that is based normally a slow week in, in New Hampshire uh, as far as the um, amount of visitors that are in the state. Of course, again, all bets are off this year. We, we just, this is all uncharted territory. Charlie, Charlie, my second question is I've taken a number of calls on this and um, my understanding from the people I've spoken to is that they're advocating for the full stretch of nine days as opposed to just seven. And, you know, there's some logic to that from the standpoint of, um, you know, decompressing the number of people that are there all at one time. Have you given that further consideration as a board? Well, we're advocating for the, for the full nine days, Councillor. We are advocating 22nd through the 30th. That would be starting on Saturday and going to the following Sunday. And I agree with you on that. And the third question is, um, you know, I think there's been some um, feedback about date in September as opposed to August. Has the board considered that option, um, and why why August over September? We have, and and there's a couple reasons. Uh, first, the first reason I guess would be that uh, you hate the you hate to. Uh, to push it further into the fall if you don't need to with regards to weather and, and, uh, and the fact is the mindset is that September is September, it's not summertime. And even though June is technically the start of June of summer is the 22nd, in most people's minds, uh, June is, is the beginning of summer. So our sponsors uh, are very anxious to have this in August if, if it's possible to do that. I understand too, counselor, some, some businesses are looking at this like to say, well, you know, if we have a, if everybody wants to come in August because they couldn't come in July and June, they may be thinking that, you know, we can fill up in August and then we can still get a, a big hit in September uh, whenever, whenever the date was. Uh, the, the, of course, there's no guarantee on that. But I think for, for the city uh, and the state and the visitors and quite frankly, for all businesses, to maximize the, the um, impact of, of Motorcycle Week, uh, those nine days in August are definitely the best dates. If we can do it then. One last question, going back to coordinating with the state. I'd like to hear, not, not, not maybe right now, but how um, the decision will be made about at whatever date is picked um, and with what interval of uh, lead time on that. Uh, you don't have to answer that right now, but I think that's something I'd like to know more about. Are you saying, so you're saying if the state said, uh, when, they, when they say in fact that, okay, August, we can have large gatherings or, or we can't, is that what you're talking about? Right, in other words, in terms of like, for example, all the city departments and other businesses that have to plan for sure. the actual days is that you know people have to make certain commitments to be able to fulfill schedules. I think we can't just sort of make it as a, a last second decision, I would no. think. And, no. and the manager may feel differently, but um, I'm just- well, I, like, I agree with you wholeheartedly, our counselor, that there's no way we could do that for not only for the city, but for everybody else. So I, I think, uh, I think Councillor Cheney had once mentioned, mentioned to me about August 1st, uh, which would be 
well, 22 days out, uh, three weeks. Uh, we could go that long. We could go, I mean, even, even four weeks out, we'll have a, a pretty good idea. We're, we're about six weeks out from June now, and I think we got a pretty good idea, especially with the fact that the, the governor just pushed out his decisions now to May 15th. I wouldn't be surprised if he does that again, but who knows? Thank you. Appreciate it. We certainly want to do, you know, with regards to the virus and everything, we certainly want to be right on board with everybody else and be doing the, making the right decision here, uh, you know, out of concern for everybody as best we can. I'm all, I'm all set, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Littman. Any other questions of Representative St. Clair? Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilor Felch has his hand up. Councilor Felch, um, you're recognized. I was uh, <clears throat> at the uh, board meeting for the Motorcycle Week Association, and I was gonna wait till later because this is on the agenda, but um, they unanimously decided on August 22nd through the 30th to keep it a nine day event. Um, they will make a decision by the, end of, uh, by the end of the week to postpone it um, or not, but of course it's probably gonna be postponed. Um, and at some point they're gonna follow what's going on with the governor and hopefully by the beginning of August, if we have to move it back again, they'll move it back. Um, I've also heard from a lot of people, a couple of them wished we'd move it to September, but the majority of them really want to have it from August 22nd to the 30th. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilor Phelps. Okay, Mr. Mayor, there's a citizen by the name of Jim Morash who has his hand up. You're recognized, Mr. Morris. Evening, uh, Mayor and Councilors. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. I wish I were here to invite you all to a shakedown cruise uh, coming up shortly, but uh, as you can imagine, uh, we're uh, we're on hold a bit as as well as everybody in the hospitality industry awaiting to see what that crystal ball will tell us. And if anybody has a clear one, I'd, I'd love to borrow it. Um, thank you, Charlie, for uh, considering us uh, with your thoughts of, excuse me, Rep Representative uh, St. Clair, <laughs> uh, for thinking of us. And um, I just wanna say that uh, I do have to uh, respectfully disagree with uh, Charlie on one point. And, that is his uh, remark about it being a slow week. Um, I've been in the hospitality industry my whole life and uh, with the Mount Washington, it, it, it has historically been our third busiest week of the uh, summer season. Now I understand that uh, this is going to be a questionable season um, at the very least, um, but I also am figuring that if we are going to have any uh, resemblance of a summer, it's going to fall into August. Um, a number of our bookings that we had in May, and by the way, we've canceled May at this point, and we are looking at June. Uh, I think we're going to be lucky to open our season at the end of June. Uh, my fingers are crossed. But a number of our uh, functions are, are looking at that uh, time frame in August. Um, I got uh, right now... Uh, a number of groups booked for that week. Um, as you know, I'll be losing about 80 some odd cruises with all my vessels. Uh, importantly, the dinner cruises on the Mount that we run uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and Saturday, uh, I'll be losing two weekends um, to my <coughs> um, And there's no doubt uh, bike week um, for us is, is, a, is a business that we have never been able to um, generate a lot of uh, general public. Um, we've been fortunate in the past in the month of June to have a number of charters during the week that we've been able to take out of different ports. But uh, when you get into my regular high season of July and August, those scheduled uh, dinner cruises, I would most definitely have to take offline. And um, I would lose a fair amount of business 
and quite frankly, uh, uh, I just can't uh, fathom uh, what it would do to us uh, taking that uh, third week of August away from us. Um, looking at September uh, around the Bike Timberfest, I know um, you know we're going to follow up uh, Bike Week uh, in August with the, if they have that date with a Bike Timberfest uh, in the middle of September. Um, I would ask the council to consider this. I mean, uh, can we uh, not uh, consider having uh, Bike Week uh, in September? The weather's beautiful in September historically, so I don't know what there doesn't seem to be a, uh, a weather problem. Um, and quite frankly, the number of businesses I've spoken to uh, are in favor of September. I've spoken to a number of lodging uh, uh, businesses in the area who say uh, their August dates are, are full right now. And for them to try to take anything more from uh, uh, transferring June into August, uh, it just isn't gonna be able to happen. Um, and I've heard from people in the uh, Conway area, they've got the same issue. They're pretty well booked for August. So I think lodging is going to be an issue. Um, speaking with some of the restaurants, I mean, they're looking at it the same way I am. August is a very busy uh, season. Uh, and uh, for them to now turn around and uh, have bike week, it's sort of uh, taking away from their normal business. Um, so I asked the council, I, I, I know I've written a letter to you. I, I'm sure you all know uh, our position uh, to really consider it. I mean, uh, it would severely hurt us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, and the, uh, certainly the last thing anyone on the council or the city hall wants to do is to uh, make, a, make a decision that, that negatively impacts your business. I think this is all uh, very challenging times for all businesses throughout this country really. Um, and, and I would ask that the lines of communication between you and Representative St. Clair remain open. Um, I, I think this is a very fluid situation, that's for sure. And, and certainly we'd be open to further discussions as well. Well, I, I do appreciate that. Um, you know, I haven't heard from Charlie about it. I, I've been going on what I'm reading and what I'm hearing from other people. That's why I'm here this evening to, to talk about it. Um, you know, opening up uh, Weir's Beach to four wheel traffic that during bike week, uh, if you have it in August is certainly gonna be unprecedented. And I, I find that um, the position uh, to be uh, hard to believe that, uh, um, you know, the motorcycle committee would wanna do that. Um, you know, as far as parking, I mean, and, and everything, um, you know, Weir's Beach is a good part of our parking, but it's more about the, uh, the public that are used to uh, seeing uh, the weirs open in that time frame of August and July. And then all of a sudden they're gonna come down and find it closed. Um, and then on top of that, I don't know what I'm gonna do in canceling all these functions that I already have. Uh, one of which is a, uh, possibly I could take a charter out of another port, but uh, you know, you got a wedding on the afternoon cruise that I have and I don't know, it's just, and then to find out that they may still want to postpone yet again. So once I make a maneuver only to have it uh, turned around and changed to another date, it just seems to me it would make more sense to put it into September. I think I can handle it in September a lot easier. Uh, I have less cruises. I can uh, deal with uh, canceling uh, those and, and making maneuvers to uh, handle it a lot easier. Uh, Representative St. Clair wishes to speak. Yes, Representative. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know my hand was up. I wasn't going to say anything, but um, again, uh, I totally understand where uh, Jim's coming from. Uh, and certainly, uh, again, other than, you know, other than moving the rally out of August, uh, we would certainly uh, work to get, uh, have that right lane of traffic open for, again, for buses or VIP vehicles. Uh, Etc. Uh, but that—that's about. That's all I could say. Again. And Mr. Damatos also wishes to speak. Mr. Damatos, you're recognized. 
to speak. Thank you very much, Jose de Matos, 1192 uh, Weirs Boulevard. I just, um, as you all know, I, I did send you the email today, my full support on moving the event to uh, the August 22nd to 30th. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna say anything else, but I just wanted to follow up. And, and as Mr. Felch mentioned, the board of directors of Motorcycle Week back in March had thrown out the date of 822. And as you all know, that has become uh, a very public uh, point. Many people have seen it on social media. A lot of people thought it was already a done deal. Uh, so that's been out there for well, uh, well over a month uh, already. And lots of people have, have uh, contemplated uh, having that move till then. As far as business that time, business drops over 75%. I, I just, uh, in, in the last few minutes, I quickly went to the last three years and besides the, that weekend after the 22nd, there's no business during the week until that next weekend. So traditionally the business does drop off tremendously then because of the kids going uh, back to school. Um, I am getting calls and emails already from other potential guests that are not able to rebook their June date at other properties asking um, for that August date. Um, so, you know, Where's Beach is still open. It would still be open. Um, and this date's been out there and I ask that you support that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. No other people wishing to speak, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now moving on to number 19, which is the city manager's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Unmuting um, your report for this uh, this meeting in April, the last meeting in April is the Laconia Projects update. It is included in the council packet that was also posted online. Uh, prior to getting to that, I will just indicate that um, I have not approved anything administratively since our last meeting, so I have nothing to report out versus some of the routine items like uh, blood mobile drive parking spaces or a temporary traffic order those types of things so nothing to report out tonight so on the project updates i'll keep this uh, quick this evening the mayor did mention the route three state bridge project starting today uh, in the weirs uh, and again we are pleased that that is able to move forward although a little bit delayed uh, we are also uh, going to be winding up any significant work on union avenue uh, down in the area of stark street because that is part of the detoured route we will continue over the next two weeks, weather dependent, to uh, wrap up some smaller projects in and around the downtown. A lot of the uh, ADA compliant intersections with not only the hardware being posted, but the tip downs and the paving occurring there. We'll also be uh, completing the uh, bump outs on Beacon Street West, which the curbing is now in on as well. We have been raising structures on Court Street uh, with the anticipation of doing the final paving, which right now is scheduled for early next week, weather dependent. Um, so really within the next two weeks, we ought to see a lot of wrapping up of in the street work for the whole Main Street area and the Court Street as well. Um, there will be some punch list items, um, you know, uh, loam and seating and that type of stuff uh, in the areas we've disturbed, but uh, you're gonna see a, a lot really happen in the next two weeks. The other item that I wanted to bring to your attention tonight is uh, we had gone out to bid um, for the Bartlett Beach project. Um, we are in the process of awarding that. So that project, in addition to the remainder of the work that we were not able to complete last season due to running out of time on Bond Beach, are both slated to be completed um, prior to the summer season. So that is positive that both those beaches will have improvements, especially in the area of stormwater runoff and drainage and those types of things. So um, I will stop there and take any questions that anyone may have, knowing that you still have a few items ahead of you on the agenda tonight. Uh, thank you, City Manager. Are there any questions from uh, councilors? Councilor Cheney and Councilor Felch have their hands up. Councilor Cheney, you're acknowledged. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask the manager, obviously not to report tonight, but if he could report to us sometime in the near future. Again, I'm not sure that even the next meeting could accomplish some of these, but I have a number of items that uh, I, I have questions about. Um, 
I, I was hoping we could get a report on where we're at with the private roads issue, which ones are, are completed, which ones are in the works, et cetera. Uh, second, I would ask that someone from the staff talk to Lakeport Landing and ask about the representation on all the paperwork I received, which indicated a brick tower would be uh, included in the final uh, building to represent a hose tower uh, with the idea of sort of keeping the fire department uh, history alive there. Uh, recently noticed that it's turning, it, it's been blue for the best part of the year and I notice now it's turning black. I'm hoping someone can get an answer for why we're not getting the brick tower. We were certainly led to well, believe it would be uh, built. No, if it only goes body and have a good time, they don't have to. I'm, I'm also uh, interested in them, but also come. where we are with Wait, the yeah, first we can. Um, I'd like to hear what the status of the uh, court case involving the corner of roller coaster road and uh, the cleanup of that property. Also, the cleanup of the property on the corner of Pickerel Pond Road. And finally, have we had any uh, indication of when the house on Court, Court Street that looks like it belongs to the Munsters might uh, be either taken down or, or dressed up or something? <clears throat> Excuse me. Some time ago, I asked about uh, taxing double poles and we, we sort of laughed about it and suggested we pick one area to see if the utilities were paying when they have duplicate poles on the same road. I haven't heard anything about that. I was hoping at our next meeting or at some subsequent meeting, we might get a report on uh, whether or not we're getting uh, paid for both poles uh, existing on the uh, roads. Um, and, and I guess, finally, um, I had spoken quite some time ago to the uh, city clerk about absentee ballots and the difficulties she's had uh, getting them out. And I, I wondered if we had a discussion or ought to have a discussion about uh, trying to upgrade the mailing procedure so that we're assured that people get uh, the stuff that she mails out. I don't, I don't believe the problem is, is in the clerk's office. I believe the problem's in the post office. And I think uh, perhaps upgrading to return receipt or something similar, I, I know it would be more expensive, but would at least sure, assure that people got their uh, absentee ballots. And with that, uh, list, I'll quit. I'm sure I'll be popular. And I have a question too. Well, um, uh, Councilor Cheney raised a, uh, a number of issues there and I'll, would you like to address any of the issues that were raised uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Myers? I would, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, very quickly, I can punch off a few of these. I think I already reported out at a meeting about six months ago on the Lakeport Landing. While that it did show a brick rendering for the Hobes Tower, that was not a condition of planning board approval. Um, I think I shared some emails back and forth between our planning director and the property owner of why she was looking to go this route. I'm happy to share those emails again, but that was not a condition of approval and we have nothing to hold that to. On the roller coaster road property, as far as the cleanup of, um, a very cluttered property. Uh, we were noticed today that with the court is closed uh, until um, minimum of May 25th. And that at this point, we have a date of uh, final management conference for this particular property on October 9th and a bench trial on October 23rd. And I can tell you on the Court Street property, we have been in long discussions with them about revamping that, um, placing curb pets where they wanted in advance of um, 
us doing the final paving and them redeveloping that property. And we continue to have conversations with them about the, that particular property. Um, and I think I shared the name of the property owner a few meetings back as well. So um, those are the quick answers I have for you tonight. And I will certainly follow up on the other items. Thank you very much. Councillor Felch also has his hand up. Councillor Felch, you're acknowledged. Yes, I had a question for the city manager. Um, I thought we had discussed not putting bump outs on Beacon Street West. No, we uh, presented, staff and I presented options to you and about moving them down. And uh, we spoke about um, not interfering with plowing and realigning the crosswalk there so it didn't uh, dump someone into an open driveway cut. And we specifically put it on an agenda and the council blessed the final concept and that's what we move forward with. Happy to share those minutes with you if you need them again, Councillor. Okay, thank you. Brian, it's Bob. Uh, Hi, Council. Uh, Bob. Councillor Hamley, you're acknowledged. Uh, yes, um, I just want to echo what Tony just said. Uh, I recall pretty distinctively that uh, we said no bump outs on uh, Beacon West because we were discussing the one on Beacon East also when we said no bump outs on either. Um, <clears throat> It, it, the um, handicap accessible things that they've done in uh, Church Street area and uh, main Church and uh, Veterans Square area, uh, they've used uh, the sidewalks that were already there uh, and, and some of them have a pretty limited approach. The one on Beacon West is pretty expansive and uh, they could actually have shrunken that up more because there's plenty of grass area um, going towards the parking lot uh, where the stores are. Uh, I, I, you know, I recall we said that. I know maybe what they voted on, but uh, I'm the one who brought it up about no bump outs. And uh, there it yes, is. Council, you did. So actually it was on the agenda two different times. And the first time it was tabled pending another rendering brought forward. And you were the one who was speaking about putting a push button beacon and I remember speaking yeah. to you about how you needed to have a flat surface that somebody could approach if they're in a wheelchair so they could push the button um, without being on the tip down to it. And we talked about moving it down because it was not appropriate to have a crosswalk come across from Water Street and empty out basically into the middle of that open driveway cut there. So I can bring you the first uh, agenda item in minutes and I will bring you the second follow-up that we did uh, with the full discussion. And as you know, all of these meetings are on YouTube. So I'm happy to uh, refer you to the dates and you can go and actually watch the proceedings if, if that's um, preferable as well. But I will get that information to both. Uh, I'll get it to all the counselors since two of you have asked for it, we'll get it to all of you. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I know it was spoken of that uh, they may have to go out into the road a little bit uh, to do this. But I think uh, if they found they had to go out a whole lot more, they should have come back to the council. We're doing exactly what was uh, presented. No further, there was concern about plowing and we talked about how we wanted to narrow it to one lane so that cars wouldn't continue uh, while one stopped, another one potentially passing. And the concern was about plowing and we addressed that as well. And again, I would be happy to get you the minutes and also uh, send you the link for the video on that. Yeah, no need to do that. Uh, other question I have, uh, what's, is there anything going on with Pearly Pond, Scott? Yes, we actually just had a wetland scientist signed off on a final review of the need um, to be pulling some of the uh, rapidly growing shrubs in there um, to keep the pond healthy. So that final submittal, I want to say somewhere around April 13th was signed off by a wetland soil scientist and our contact at Chris Ross Shumway um, sent it off to uh, State of New Hampshire DES somewhere right around April 13th. Okay, great, thank you. Councilor Cheney has his hand up again. Councilor Cheney, your knowledge. Thank you, I, I just want to, uh, I, I want to echo what uh, uh, the previous two councilors said. I, I recognize Scott that we signed off on that, but when you actually see it, it, it it's big enough to turn a Abrams tank around on, and and it just seems significantly bigger than what I think we thought was going to be there. 
and I understand what you're saying. I, I, I know we voted it and, but, but I think it, it isn't what we anticipated was going to be happening. I don't think there's much we can do at this point, but I just, I want to support the counselor's view that, that this was more than I, and I certainly anticipated was going to happen. Thank you. Fair enough. Any other questions, comments from counselors? Seeing none, uh, City Council or uh, City Manager Eric Myers, would you be moving on to 19B, the monthly economic development? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that is the second report that is in your um, packet and uh, containing the unemployment information. This is going back to the month of February, so it looks uh, very positive at this point. Uh, we certainly expect uh, that those numbers to change, um, possibly uh, significantly for the March report, but then very much so for the April report. So um, again, there's a little bit of lag of when we get the information um, from the state and get it out, but those are the February numbers. So again, we know the, the world is upside down at this point and we're saw a significant drop in inflation uh, in the month of March um, from the prior month of February, which was 2.3% down to 1.5%. Um, I don't have the crystal ball that everybody is looking for, but I would certainly uh, think with the, um, what we've seen in gasoline prices and the lack of construction I would think that raw materials would be going down. And I'd be very surprised if we didn't see some significantly low uh, inflation numbers in the months ahead as we uh, as we track that for this year. Thank you. Uh, any questions of the city manager in regards to the monthly? Yeah, you're muted. Support? You're muted. The mayor is muted. Oh, Sorry about, about that. that. Are there any follow-up questions in regards to the monthly economic development report of the city manager, Councillor Bounds? Yeah. My, can everybody hear me now? Okay. Yes. Um, two things. Um, one, I think we're all aware that we're going to be struggling for this budget and likely for next year's budget with finding the traditional sources of revenues that we've relied on in the past in terms of our uh, budget numbers. Uh, I think we all should recognize that. And I'm going to be keeping a close watch on the CPI as we go through this. I'm not saying this as um, uh, a prelude to anything as it relates to the tax cap. I just think times are extraordinary in terms of the impact of um, the corona uh, virus, uh, COVID-19, um, and we need to exercise extreme caution um, in how we go about not only this year's budget, but next year's budget and how we go about estimating uh, projected revenues because those are going to change, I would guess significantly, um, not only for this year and despite what other people might say, probably for next year also. And so that's my comment on the monthly economic report. I don't know if this is the time to bring it up but I'll bring it up now uh, rather than bring it up in council comments. Uh, but I'm looking at an April 16, 2020 memo, um, which deals with um, the $400,000 um, the city received in revenue sharing from the state from last year's budget and how to allocate that. Um, and also a recommendation with respect to repurposing uh, the $70,000 uh, from uh, the Endicott Street East project as part of uh, a capital item. I'm not making a suggestion of what we're to do now. I'm just asking that we put that on the agenda uh, sometime soon so that we can deal with those um, 
in this budget if we're going to and prepare to deal for those in the next budget if we have to. So, thank you. Yep, I'm happy to place that on the next agenda for you, Councillor. Thank you. One more question, Glenn. This is Bob. Councillor Hamill wishes to speak. Councillor Hamill, you're acknowledged. Okay, thank you. Uh, while we're speaking to the city manager and Dave kind of touched on the budget, uh, I'd like to make a couple of suggestions uh, uh, that we consider when we start deliberating on the budget. And uh, two things, uh, one is the uh, $720,000 that's used to help decrease the, uh, uh, the taxes and the 1.6 million uh, that we're gonna be using for uh, road repairs. I'd like to, the council to consider maybe bonding those uh, the interest rate is extremely low right now and keeping that money uh, in cash uh, in case we have uh, shortfalls in, in other areas. So it's just a thought uh, for us to consider later on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamill. Any other comments? No, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, seeing none. Uh, moving on to new business. Uh, 20A is our discussion and update on Laconi, Laconia Motorcycle Week event. Uh, uh, this will be a, a topic of discussion right now, as we all heard earlier, uh, Representative St. Clair and has requested that a contingency date would be put in place of August 22nd through 30th, which is that third week of August and moving it. Of course, I don't think we know right now whether the governor is going to issue some sort of direction on this as to whether he would like to see it postponed or not. So I think there's some there's some question here as to is it really going to be postponed? I mean, it seems to me that the we're trending towards it probably. I'd like to believe that we're coming out of the, the, the pandemic at that point, uh, but I don't know if the numbers and the data will be there to support having an event uh, in the city of Laconia that uh, uh, would allow for a lack of social distancing and uh, as difficult as that is in light of the economic downturn that many restaurants and uh, hotels and um, associated businesses are, are, are working through right now. Uh, but I will put this up for discussion right now. Um, Mr. Mayor, Councilor Felch has his hand up. Councilor Felch, you're acknowledged. Yes, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've heard from a lot of constituents and also a lot of businesses. Um, I've heard from at least two businesses that own hotels, motels, that are in favor of the last week in August. I've also heard from several businesses right there in the Weirs that all would like to see it on the 22nd to the 30th. Um, I think there's only been one or two that would prefer to have it in September. Um, I would like to see the council approve as a tentative date, the 22nd through the 30th. So if I hear you correctly, Councillor Felch, you are uh, presenting a motion that a contingency date of August 22nd through the 30th be proposed um, for Laconia Motorcycle Week 2020. Yes, sir. Is there a second? Okay. Councillor Cheney has a second. Seconded, oh, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Uh, further discussion on contingency dates of the 22nd through the 30th of August for Motorcycle Week. Uh, I, have a, I have a comment. Uh, yes, Councillor Hamill, you're acknowledged. Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't mind at all uh, that being a contingency date, uh, but I think we really need to discuss what's going to happen in June. And I think this council has to be responsive. Uh, to the present situation we're in. Um, and I think we need to make a decision here sooner than later of, about the June dates. Uh, I mean, I was scheduled to go to over three motorcycle rallies uh, 
on the East Coast here and all of them have been canceled and some of them are far out. So they're making that decision now and I think we should do the same thing. I can't imagine for June that we would invite tens of thousands of people up here from some of, some of the hottest areas of the country, uh, namely New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, to come here and uh, obviously it's gonna be pretty hard to be six foot distance from each other when actually some of the venues uh, up at the Weirs wouldn't even allow that. So I think it's our responsibility to be uh, responsive in this situation. And uh, I don't think we should allow the event to happen in June. And I think that's our decision. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council Thank you, Lippmann. Hamill. Council Lippmann, you're acknowledged. Thank you, Mayor. I guess the other issue in terms of, um, I agree with what Council Hamill said, um, in terms of um, making a decision about an alternative date, I think the, the, the wider consideration um, and the weirs with respect to um, the two consecutive dates in August and September, what that does to other businesses, you know, we heard from Mount Washington, I've heard from others, whether that is the optimal, if you will, balancing act. We, we all know the weirs involves selling entertainment, sleep and recreation and just concerned here that as we make this decision, we make it work relative balance to all the stakeholders that, that uh, have to make a living um, to be around for next season. And hopefully it's back to normal. So I'm, I guess I'm saying I'm not necessarily in favor of, of the motion as proposed. So Councillor Lippman, would you offer some form of amendment to that motion? But I think it's really a three-part amendment. I think um, Councillor Hamill um, raises a, a good concern. Um, I think I don't necessarily have an objection to the to picking the date that was proposed by uh, Councillor Felch as a as a starting point. But I think we also need to give consideration to not um, wipe out the complete season for the other players there. So, Council Whitman, if I, if I hear you correctly, you would not support necessarily the contingency date of August 22nd, but you would support a three-part motion that one, one postponed one. the June date the second prong of this would be uh, option one we'll call August 22nd through the 30th date. But you would also suggest a contingency date of sometime in September that to, would be further discussed. Now the third, the third option is making sure that those um, people in the weirs whose businesses depend on, on having, you know, some availability. In other words, I think we heard from um, explicitly from Mount Washington that they were concerned about losing both uh, the August dates and the September dates for their business um, because of the subsequent September bike fest. And, and I don't think he's the only one in the weirs that has that concern. I mean, there's to say that there's not going to be any bike week if it's possible is not right. But to also say that Nobody, anybody who's not affiliated with Bike Week doesn't have an opportunity to earn a, earn a living is not fair either. Okay. So my, my three-part motion would be to, to um, postpone the June date if, if August 22nd is, is a, in fact a possible date to, to have it happen, that if it can happen, that that's that's good, but that the September date, if it if it fails to be able to, if it goes forward in August, then the September date ought to have some consideration to the other um, stakeholders and the mayors. Can I speak on that? Uh, 
Yes, absolutely, Councillor Fouch. Hold on one moment. Uh, I, I don't. I still don't understand what you're suggesting there, uh, Council Littman. Postpone the June date. August twenty yep. second is the backup date. But I'm missing the third portion of this. The third portion is that there's also a September bike fest date on the on the calendar as well. So in effect. If there is an August, in fact, the August date of the bike week goes forward, that's good. Okay, the full nine days. But then just two weeks later, the September date would also, if the September date was Bike Fest week, not Bike Week, but Bike Fest, September Fest, or whatever it's being called today. Bike September Fest. Bike September Fest. Bike September Fest occurs on September 15th and effectively. You know, a business like the Mount Washington is be losing a lot more than just than that ten day period, which is also a concern to them. You know, I think Charlie's trying to make a good faith effort to try to make it work over that bike week, but then to follow it up subsequently with another one, I think affects the Mount Washington and other stakeholders from the Weirs. That's assuming that the August twenty second date goes forward. If it doesn't. That's a different issue, but I'm saying, assuming the August 22nd date goes. Can I speak on that? Councillor Felch. Um, yeah. Um, so they have, they have a weekend to be able to make something. Okay, Henry, um, I, I have heard from Anthony and Megan from uh, Tower Hill Tavern and the other bar that they have up there. They're both in favor of it being the last week of August. I've heard from a couple of the vendors that are on the boardwalk. They're in favor of it having that weekend. I've heard from the Ames family. They're in favor of the August weekend. That's not the, excuse me, Council Phelps. That's not, you're not understanding what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. As I'm saying, if you go with the August 22nd date, and in fact, the bike week does occur August 22nd through the 30th. Then the next event, which is like September Fest, if you will, which is not Bike Week, the other right. the event planned in September would then be giving two bike events at the expense of any events for the non-bike oriented businesses in the Weirs. I don't know if that one would affect that. You only block off the second half of the weirs there. The whole weirs isn't blocked off. And they, well, they, they don't have the number of people that you would have for bike week. I'm, I'm telling you that, that you heard tonight from one of the biggest stakeholders who's a non-bike business that concerned about it. And then um, other folks that have spoken up about it. So uh, I just, think that some consideration for the totality of businesses that have to operate out of the weirs needs to be part of this um, resolution and not just bike week. Oh, I understand that, but I don't believe that week in September really affects the Mount Washington. Let's hear from, let's hear again from the stakeholders. We can make a decision to tentatively do the June and August, but we can hold off on the September issue so we had more feedback, but what I'm suggesting is let's make the decision together. Okay, so okay. So there's a motion on the table with a second, but it sounds to me that Council Littman would like to replace that motion with an amendment, which would be a recommendation from the city council to postpone the June date of Laconia Motorcycle Week to August 22nd through the 30th with the possibility that we perhaps consider at a future meeting whether the bike Timberfest two weeks later should be canceled in acknowledgement of the other non-bike businesses in the weirs. You have it, Mayor, thank you. Uh, may I say something more, Mayor? 
Ms. Bob. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think also, uh, I don't know if you want to make that as part of it, because I'm not, I'm not doing a uh, supplement to that motion, but uh, I think we should have uh, a August 1st, uh, maybe like a deadline or a revisit of whether things have changed enough with the coronavirus that we are even able to have uh, the rally in, in the end of August. Uh, I think that would end up being another determination date. Uh, if hopefully things will go well. I hope things open up. Uh, but I think we can do a whole lot more social distancing in a restaurant or hotel or whatever than you can uh, down on, the, on Lake Street. Um, so I think uh, we need to revisit this on, on whether it's going to happen in, in that date of August or not. Councillor Bounds. Okay. I think we can take it for granted and not speculation that June is not happening for bike week. And it's just not going to be there. There isn't um, going to be a relaxation of the current restrictions that's going to allow us to have entertained those kinds of crowds in June. So we should just all accept that um, as a given and be realistic about it. Um, having accepted that as a given, uh, we should just move forward with the August 22nd day uh, through the 30th. Um, and that's also going to be dependent upon how the state recovers and where we're at in July and August. Um, it's not dependent upon what we do. It's dependent upon what the state of the recovery is uh, for the state of New Hampshire. And they're going to dictate um, what the issues will be in August. And if in August or July, they say uh, that uh, you can't accommodate those types of crowds for an August 22nd to an August 30th day, we're gonna have to accept that as reality. That, that's just how it's gonna happen. It's not a city council vote on that matter. So we can revisit August 22nd and August 30th at any time we want. I would like the board uh, for most likely week to go forward with canceling the June meeting, make plans for scheduling the August 22nd through 30th and see what the extraordinary events of uh, this year are going to bring. And that's all we can do. So. We shouldn't be pushing anything off until September. <coughs> we should give them a certain date, a date certain, wait to see what happens. Because uh, if we get the all, all if we get the green light for August, we'll go forward with August. If the state doesn't give us the green light for August for those kinds of crowds, then we're gonna have to do something else. And maybe that means canceling it all together. But we can't we can't predict at this time what the state is gonna do. Um, and neither can the state. And I think the governor has been very clear about that yeah. in all of his press conferences. So let's accept reality for what it is. June is gone. Reschedule for August. See what happens. Period. Thank you. Councilor Felch and Councilor Cheney both have their hands up. Councilor Cheney, you're acknowledged. Thank you. I. Uh... I think we all agree that canceling the June date is appropriate. It sounds to me like we all agree that the August date, uh, August uh, 22nd date is appropriate. Uh, and, and I don't, I mean, I didn't take Henry's uh, suggestion number three as canceling anything, but rather he, he would like us to revisit uh, the September date uh, at, at a later time. I think August 1st would be appropriate, but he might feel differently. I, I don't think that's inappropriate. I, that, I don't think that forces us to say there won't be a October Fest or September Fest 
uh, at this point, uh, or, or even then. But I think it's reasonable to to uh, for the counselor to to want to revisit this with the people. I, if I understood him correctly, with the people who are involved, he wants to hear from the constituents who will be affected by it. Uh, I, I don't think it's inappropriate to to say we'll uh, revisit uh, the discussion about the September uh, uh, test uh, at some later date. So I, I guess I want to say, I don't think Henry's uh, uh, arguing with any of us on the June or August date and only asking that we at least look at the September best date sometime probably in August to be sure that's something we should do. I don't, I don't think that's an unreasonable request. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Cheney. Uh, Councilor Felch has his hand up. Councilor Felch, you're acknowledged. Yes. Um, I mean, if the council wants to cancel for June, I have no problem with that. The association was gonna meet this week to make that determination. Um, and the dates in August, but I don't feel that the third option should be in this vote. It's something we can revisit at another time, but it should have nothing to do with this, this vote. Thank you, Councillor Felch. Uh, Counts yes, uh, yes, Councillor Hammond. Yes, um, to make this simpler, it, it, I, I make this suggestion. Let's, let's have one vote on the June event and then we can uh, vote on the August event if we want to, uh, and, and take these two two things separately. You know, so I'm just, a, just suggesting that the councilors remove their motion from the floor yes. and just vote on June for now, and then we can discuss. August. That's what we're going. To, that's what we're going to do. Thank you, Councilor Hamill. So I'd ask Councilor Haynes, would you consider withdrawing his motion? Was it you? That, Post Councilor Fouts, would you consider removing your motion, um, withdrawing your motion to move the to, to move it motorcycle week to August 22nd? I would vote on that anyhow. Or do you want to vote on the June date, removing June 1st? No. Okay. Yeah. If he, if he withdraws his motion, you vote on June 1st, then you move forward to August. And Mr. Mayor, if you can, if you can, yes. I'm not sure if you are guys, but uh, Councilor Lipman's hand has been up for a few minutes. Okay, just a moment. So I'd ask that uh, Councilor Felch, if you withdraw your motion, would you consider doing that? Yeah, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. So there is no motion on the table right now. I, uh, Councilor Lipman, you're acknowledged. Thank you. Again, I think. Councilor Hamill's suggestion of bifurcating the, the June date off is fine. I do think though that out of respect for the entire group of businesses that need to do business in the weirs that, that if bike week goes off on the week of August 22nd, then there should be some consideration to the other. But if we wanna get one thing done, let's take the June one and finish that and move on to the next subject. I just don't think it's fair to just have one consideration without the other. Well, I think we can we can speak to the hold other on, one. Hold on, Councillor Hamill. Do you finish, Councillor Littman? I'll support the motion on the June date, and let's get that off the table. Okay. Uh, no. City Manager has raised his hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't want to speak for Jim Morris in the Mount Washington, but I think what Jim was saying was that if he needed to rebook things and then he went to August and then motorcycle week happened in August and he canceled or it was potentially gonna happen in August and he had to cancel cruises and he moved them into September. And then all of a sudden motorcycle week moved into September. He was just gonna you know, lose all of his business by having two potential dates. First, let's move it to August, let's move it to September. I believe Councillor Felch is correct that by Timberfest, which only involves the closure of the road from um, Tower Street to Foster Street and basically takes place from a Friday night until a Sunday at five o'clock. 
doesn't do anything with four wheeled vehicles, doesn't impact any of the cruises that the Mount has in September. If it's just the bike Timberfest, I think what Jim was saying is he couldn't lose August dates and then all of a sudden have the rally go to September and then he lose nine days of September dates. So again, I, I don't want to speak 100% for Jim, but um, in my past conversations with him, the fact that the traffic detour allows folks to come down Lakeside in cars, buses, whatever, and they get right out up Tower Street with no detour and get back up to Route 3, that's a non-issue for him. I think the bigger thing is having a couple of dates for rallies and he ends up canceling a couple of times. Councillor Hamley, you had your hand up. Uh, well, I, I just, uh, you know, like I want to vote on the June thing, but um, I think we can discuss about the August thing. And, and to be perfectly honest, unless there's an, immun an immunization shot for this coronavirus, you're not taking away any of the possibilities that people can't catch this. Uh, until that shot has arrived, everybody can be in danger from this spreading. So, and I agree with uh, David that uh, a lot of it will depend on what the governor says on, on these extensions um, that he's been doing. So, but uh, it's just a chance that uh, everybody's gonna be taken. If you get a big crowd up here, they don't have an immunization for it. So it'll be a risk. That's all I gotta say, thank you. Nobody else uh, seeking to speak at this time. So is there going to be a, Councilor Littman, do you want to put a motion on the table now? So I think the motion that we can all agree on is the June date is, is off. I'll second right. it. Okay, so the motion on the table is that the City Council is recommending that the June dates for Laconia Motorcycle Week uh, be canceled. Is there a second? Councillor Hamill has seconded it. Further discussion on this motion alone. Uh, I think this is an appropriate motion. I think the evidence is not trending in such a way that I would be comfortable with uh, having this event in June myself. So, uh, is there any other discussion? Anyone else want to weigh in on this? Seeing none, I would call, ask the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Cheney? Yes. Councillor Baum? Yes. Councillor Littman? Yes. Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor Hamill? Yes. Councillor Felch? Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. The motion to cancel Laconia Motorcycle Week for June 2020 passes 6-0. Now, is there, staying on this subject, is there another motion that a council would like to put on the table for discussion? Yes. Councilor Bounds. Yes. Uh, I think that uh, the motorcycle Week folks and everybody else needs to know a date certain. So I move that we reschedule this um, uh, pending a lot of uh, you know, future events that we can't predict from 8.22 to 8.30. I think we can take care of uh, Council Littman's concerns with just an acknowledgement um, that, um, that that date may have to be revisited now, based upon future circumstances that we can't predict. So I just make the motion that we schedule this for uh, that we agree. I don't think we, that we agree with a, a tentative date of August 22nd to August 30th. That's my motion. Is there a second on Councillor Bounds' motion? Yes, I'll second. Councillor Felch seconds. Further discussion on Councillor Bounds' motion to reschedule Laconia Motorcycle Week to August 22nd through the 30th. Councilor Lippman has his hand up. Councilor Lippman, you're acknowledged. Um, thank you, Mayor. As a procedural matter, would it be possible for us to hear if uh, Mr. Sinclair and Mr. Morash are still available to get their perspective on 
make sure that what the mayor, I mean, excuse me, the manager represented is in fact their perspectives. Yes, I would ask if uh, Mr. Marash is still uh, listening in, if he could raise his hand and <clears throat> step to the podium. I believe uh, Mr. Marash could speak. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I am here. Yes. So the, the, the question that's been raised, and, and I think the city manager got your characterization as correct, and correct us if, if I'm wrong here, is that if we were to move this to August 22nd, um, and then as that date approached, we found that we might have to move the date to September, um, what would that do to your scheduling to, what impact would it have on your business? Well, thank you. And, and yes, the city manager, uh, I appreciate him speaking for me, um, was very accurate. And uh, I would ask you gentlemen to put yourself in my shoes. You vote on a date tonight and then all of a sudden uh, I make maneuvers uh, accordingly uh, to, you know, I'm going to have to cancel some cruises and, and switch some groups around. And then at a later date, you turn around and you switch it again to September. Uh, by putting it into September, which I'm asking you to consider right now, uh, I think the September date is, is a much more viable date, not only for myself, but for other businesses that I've spoken to. And there are many other businesses um, that are, would like to see that September date. Um, and I would ask that that one be considered instead of the August one. But yes, I do have a concern of having to uh, pick one date only to have it uh, possibly uh, canceled for another date. And that would be uh, double indemnity for me, so to speak. So, Would you have a, um, uh, a nine day date that would work better for you in September? Yeah, I, I would say anytime right after Labor Day, um, which I thought uh. ideally the Bike Timberfest is the second week. If you run it right into Bike Timberfest, you're you're sort of uh, having two birds in your hand. Um, I just thought that that would be an ideal time frame, um, And I think the other uh, businesses uh, can certainly work with that as well. Um, it, it, it's a great time in September. Representative St. Clair, are you available to weigh in on this? I am, thank you. Uh, we couldn't do the rally uh, at that time in September because there's a major rally in Ocean City, Maryland where most of our vendors would be at, including several of our sponsors. Um, but getting to what Jim said about if we plan something in, in, in August and it has to be canceled, it wouldn't just be us that's canceled, it's everything else that's going on because that would be because there would be no uh, you know, large crowds or people gathering in, in groups uh, anywhere. So that would, that would be out of our hands. And, and, and again, that wouldn't be, uh, I, I'm sure that it wouldn't be just Motorcycle Week. It'd probably be the beach. It'd probably be Hampton Beach. It'd probably be any place where people gather uh, and you couldn't keep them six feet apart or whatever they come up with at that, at that time, if, if that so happens. So that wouldn't be a matter of us just saying, well, we gotta, we're gonna cancel Motorcycle Week and it's gonna disrupt other people. Everybody's gonna be disrupted at that point in, in the month of August, if that so happens to be the way it works out. But in September, the only, uh, if we did go to September, and as I've told some of you, I'm prepared to hold a snow event in December, if it comes up to that, <laughs> if, if, you know, if, if, if that was the case. But again, in September, uh, what we were looking at as, as a standby, would be uh, the 19th of September, starting that weekend and, and, and see how, how much that would, uh, where we would go from. So that's uh, basically one, two, three, uh, the start of the fourth week in September. If, if in fact we had to go that route. I think it's pretty cold at night. It certainly um, is. Mr. Marash has raised his hand again. Yes, Mr. Marash, you're acknowledged. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would only comment that there is a possibility, uh, unlike what Charlie said, that um, 
we could still be open and the governor just says that uh, the, he doesn't want large groups of, uh, uh, of events happening. So as a business, I would operate like a, a restaurant and we could be in like that phase three category where the Mount could operate under its uh, uh, social distancing and things and still be able to do our cruising. So um, if, if you get to a point where you're going to have to cancel August, I could still be running my business um, and so that wouldn't necessarily affect it, 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 Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not a large event. Uh, I can social distance on the, on the vessel and still be able to run cruises. So uh, that uh, excellent input from both of you. What I would suggest right now is that there si still seems to be a couple of issues that we should consider and resolve before we put another date in the books right now. I'm wondering if over the next two weeks, um, we can continue to take input from uh, interested parties and put it on the May 11th agenda. I agree with that, uh, Mayor, this is Bob. Um, I think that's a good idea. Uh, put it under unfinished business and revisit it uh, on that date. Councillor Felch has his hand up. Councillor Felch. I would have to disagree with that. They okay. planning for this, if they're going to move it, um, they've already spent a lot of money, a lot of time involved in this. Um, like I said, I've talked to a lot of the businesses up there in the weirs and 80% of them would rather have it in August. Councilor Cheney, that is your ward. Would you like to weigh in on this? Well, I, I, I think it's going to be awful difficult for the Motorcycle Association to, to uh, operate in limbo. I, I, I think the, the August date, I, I understand the difficulties, but the difficulties are going to be uh, uh, for everybody in one form or another. I think we ought to give them a date um, and, and uh, let them start their planning around that. So I'm going to support the, the 22nd date. Councilor Lippman has his hand up. Councilor Lippman. I, I agree with Councilor Hamill. I understand what you're trying to say, Councilor Cheney. Um, but I, I think by... May 11th, we would maybe have enough information where we reasonably have an expectation that that could be carried forward. Um, I think having the opportunity for them to consult further with with uh, the Concord operation would be helpful as well because it's all well and good to plan for it, but if it's not going to be in the cards based on the next two weeks of activity, that would be good to know. Thank you, Councillor Littman. Can we call the question? Call the question. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'd ask you to call the roll. Councillor Jeanine. So, can you clarify the question? Wait, wait a minute. What are, what are we? The question that what, was, what was a motion on the table by Councillor Bounds for and seconded by Councillor Felch, which was to move Motorcycle Week 2020 to the nine day stretch starting on August 22nd and concluding on August 30th. My apologies for not clarifying that. Okay, so we, we have canceled June, am I yes, correct? You are. And we're now voting on the August date. Yes. Thank you, I vote no yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll, please? All right. So, Councillor Cheney? <coughs> yes. Councillor Bounds? Yes. Councillor Littman? Councillor Littman? I think he's sulking. Did you move on? Councillor Haynes? Yes. Councillor Hamill? 
Um, you're on mute. No. Yes, I'll vote yes for now. Councillor Felch. Yes. Excuse me. Councillor Lippman has his hand up. Councillor Lippman. Sorry, the uh, internet went out for a moment here. Can you um, please? So the motion on the table, Councillor Lippman, is to re reschedule Laconia Motorcycle Week 2020 commencing on August 22nd and wrapping up on August 30th. And there are five votes in, in the affirmative? Yes. I'll, I'll support it reluctantly. <laughs> Okay, with six votes in the affirmative, Laconia Motorcycle Week uh, is going to be moved for until August 22nd through the 30th. Uh, motion carries. Mr. Mr. Mayor, can I can I make a comment? Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, yes. Go ahead, Councilor Hamill. Thank you. Uh, just about some of the other rallies that I've heard of, uh, like Maricade uh, that was scheduled for the beginning of June. They've canceled and moved it to July, but I don't believe there's a date. So unless Charlie knows more about it than I do, I have not heard of a date for that one yet. And there's been a couple others that have been canceled with no dates. Uh, so just to put that on the table. Thank you, Councillor Hamill. Moving on to unfinished business. This is a second reading and approval to amend a city code chapter 235 zoning, amending table of permitted uses and table of dimensional requirements. I have three motions here. Uh, the first one uh, proposed motion would be uh, a motion to waive the reading of this ordinance in its entirety and read by title only. So made by Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Hamill. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask the city clerk to call the roll. Councilor Cheney. Yes. Councilor Bounds. Yes. Councilor Whitman. Yes. Councilor Haynes. Yes. Councilor Hamill. Councilor Hamill. Are you muted? I said yes. Okay, thank you. Councilor Felch. Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Secondly, I'm looking for a motion to move the second reading of Ordinance 2020-235 tables, amending the table of permitted uses and the table of dimensional requirements. So made by Councilor Brown, seconded by Councilor Haynes. Discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Cheney. Yes. Councilor Bounds. Yes. Councilor Whitman. Yes. Councillor Haynes? Yes. Councillor Hamill? Yes. Councillor Felch? Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. That motion carries. And thirdly and finally, I'm looking for someone to <clears throat> move a motion to approve ordinance 2020-235 tables, amending the table of permitted uses and the table of dimensional requirements. So made by Councillor Haynes, seconded by Councillor Bounds. Further discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Cheney? Yes. Councilor Bounds? Yes. Councilor Whitman? Yes. Councilor Haynes? Yes. Councilor Hamill? Yes. Councilor Felch? Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. And we move on to 21B. Councillor Felch, the uh, 21B is a update for the proposed dock expansion of the Weir's Beach, which was placed on the table um, last city council meeting. We would need a motion perhaps from Councillor Felch, if you were so inclined to take it off the table. Yes, I will. So it's seconded by anyone. Seconded by Councillor Haynes. I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Cheney. Yes. Councilor Bounds? Yes. Councilor Whitman? Yes. Councilor Haynes? Yes. Councilor Hamill? Yes. Councilor Felt? Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. That is now off uh, the table. And I would.
I guess I'd um, like to address this initially. I'm not sure what the motion will be, um, but we can we can leave that open. Um, um, on April 17th, the city manager and I had a uh, conference with uh, the dive and their attorneys uh, to talk about some of the issues that we had discussed at the city council meeting of April 13th. Um, just to clarify some issues that were expressed during the meeting and to see if there was any opportunity for resolution or compromise. Um, I thought it was a very productive discussion and uh, I have tried to, uh, I think we all expressed some reservations. I had some concern about some of the elements of the initial um, uh, proposal uh, from, from the dive. Uh, what I've tried to do over the past couple of weeks is uh, approach this proposal uh, with a goal to find a balance between the city and certainly the owners of the dive. Uh, I always felt it's our responsibility to protect and enhance the assets of the city um, and I certainly think of the Weir's docks are a very significant asset. And I felt that we as uh, elected officials here in the city are stewards and we should be responsible and considerate of these assets and certainly hopefully leave them in better shape for future generations. I think it also is a priority to make sure that um, we take into consideration any impact uh, that these decisions have on the taxpayers in the city. I tried to balance uh, over the past couple of weeks with how do we encourage um, businesses and entrepreneurs in the city um, to look at our city as a place that they can come uh, and do business and certainly would hope that our city would continue to be very viewed very favorably as a, a place. Um, and certainly we'd wanna do it in a responsible manner. We know that we're a tourist destination and dependent on people coming here and spending discretionary income. Um, it certainly is a, a competitive market for uh, entertainment and for the tourist industry. And certainly uh, uh, what we've done in, in councils before this council have done in the Weirs and on Weirs Boulevard is certainly a significant investment uh, on behalf of the city. It's really transformed over the past few years because of this investment. Uh, now, uh, it's an enticing place to do business, quite frankly, and I'm pleased to see that there, is some pri there are private citizens who want to invest their money and open businesses there. Uh, you know, these are the entrepreneurs that uh, we'd hope would come to our city when we make significant upgrades into the city. Um, I'm also a proponent of uh, the public-private um, uh, partnerships where each side can leverage assets and investments to create a desired outcome. I think it's a desired outcome of, of all of us here to figure out ways to uh, support our local economy, more, more important, important now, now than perhaps it was e even 45 days ago. Um, what has impressed me to this point uh, certainly is negotiations and discussions with the owners of the dive and through their council um, in that they're willing to invest um, based on the documents provided, perhaps upwards of $100,000 into a new, uh, wider ADA compliant dock with plumbing and electricity. What I think is significant is one of the issues we had was the initial 10 year term with two five year options after that. I think we all felt that 20 years was a little too uh, long a term to bind the city to. Uh, I am pleased to see that in their follow up proposal they have suggested that they would be amenable to a three-year term um, with two five-year options after that. Um, during that first three-year term, uh, though rent would be waived for that, um, for, for occupying the space on the dock, they would be willing to pay uh, property taxes on it to the city. I think when you combine the property taxes, which are indeterminable at this point in time, um, I think if you take that 30 uh, initial 90 to hundred thousand dollar investment into city property and you were to carry it out over three years, uh, what that really is, is in lieu of taxes, it's $30,000 of private money coming in to enhance an asset of the city. 
$30,000 per year. And I think that is really significant. The second option for five years, first option for five years, if it were to be renewed, um, it would be at market rates, which I think is, is something that would protect the long-term interests uh, uh, of the, the city and would be responsible. The, the second year option, if it were to be renewed, would be at market rates plus a CPI, um, a consumer based on a consumer price index. Um, I would also say that under this short term, three year initial lease and the follow up terms as well, um, if the lease is breached by uh, the, the new partners, uh, the dock with all of its upgrades um, remains and still is a city asset. So I think that uh, it gives the city a certain degree or should give the city a certain degree of, of um, security in entering into this agreement. I also wanna point out the fact that uh, though they weren't required to do so, um, they waived their procedural challenges, which were pending in Superior Court. Um, certainly, I think they could have, I think that was an act of good faith. They could have held back and made it a contingency of entering into an agreement, but uh, I was surprised and pleasantly surprised to see that they dropped their procedural challenges and the case has been dismissed. Um, I also am happy to see that the, one of their suggestions was that they uh, their business hours would be, would be compliant with zoning regulations of the area. Um, uh, and also what they're planning on doing from the drawings that they showed to us wouldn't inhibit future expansion or updating. Um, and certainly I think it's, uh, a pre we, I appreciate the fact that they have offered uh, the dive owners to assist in fundraising any future, um, for any future development of the dock area. I think what is important now is that the devil is always in the details and that uh, this is now before the council. There are uh, parameters for what might be an acceptable deal, certainly from the owners of the dive. Uh, but now I would suggest that it might be time for uh, the legal staff and the city manager, uh, if this council so desires to take a closer look at this, and to draft uh, perhaps an agreement, uh, a lease agreement that would be acceptable to both parties and voted on at an upcoming meeting. But those are my uh, thoughts on this issue, having worked on it fairly closely with the city manager over the past couple of weeks and actually having visited the, the dock area and walked it off with the manager and eyeballed a couple of things. Um, it certainly is, um, uh, uh, at this point, let, left a favorable impression on me. Uh, with that, I will open it up to other counselors who would like to speak. Councilor Cheney has his hand up. Um, Councilor Cheney, you are acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I, I voted in favor of taking this off the table in order that we could have this conversation. But I must confess, I agree with you that this needs more detail. I... I uh, certainly agree that that uh, it's okay to give them the first three years. Uh, I want to be sure, and as you suggested, the devil is in the details, that there's some recognition of each year of the five years and the second five years, there is, a, in addition to any negotiated increases, uh, a, a cost of... Uh, a CPI uh, provision each year. Um, I, I was troubled with some of the language in, in the paperwork we got. Uh, item 2C, uh, I'm sorry, 2D um, talks about they will endeavor to comply with the ADA requirements. And I, uh, I think that has to be changed to comply. I don't think the city can negotiate away um, or, or suggest that they should be able to attempt to meet the AD requirements. They have to meet them. It's, it's, it just has to be. Uh, I'm, I'm additionally, and I, I spoke earlier in the day to the manager about my concerns about insurance. Uh, I feel more comfortable with, with what he described to me as his intent, uh, but I certainly think I wanna see more details about the insurance 
um, provision that includes the city as an additional insured. Um, I, I would like to see things like their uh, commitment to have deliveries in the early morning set down in more concrete terms. Uh, and and uh, I hope there'll be language about not only city code, but also city ordinances, uh, including things like uh, the loudspeaker and noise ordinances. Uh, and lastly, I am concerned under uh, number 8A uh, that we add some provision which, which deals with their uh, 250 horsepower motors and their front thrusters and all sorts of things I don't understand. Uh, but this dock gets closer to where the beach is and closer to where the beach expansion that I've heard about would be. And therefore, I would want a provision added that uh, makes the dive uh, responsible to mitigate any sediment disruption uh, that their engines might create. Uh, I gather from their notes that they don't think that would happen. Uh, and, and I accept that, that they're sincere in that, but I'd still like some language in the, in the contract to make sure if the beach is disturbed as a result of, of their engines, um, that, that they'll be responsible for fixing that. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, I would say, Mr. Mayor, I agree with you that that the details need to be worked out, certainly before I can vote for this. Uh, again, I'm not opposed to it. I just want to see the details. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cheney. Councillor Brown, you are acknowledged. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to echo some of the concerns that uh, Councilor Cheney raised. Um, I, I have uh, been a long believer of a public-private partnership to improve uh, the city in any way we can. And this is exactly what this does for us, it does for the weirs, it does for our future. I guess the only caveat that I would um, uh, add, apart from what Councillor Cheney has expressed concerns about, is that I appreciate uh, the number of $100,000 or $90,000 in terms of in here. their cost for expansion of the docks and building their own dock um, so that they can carry on business. Uh, I'm not asking for precise numbers, but I would like more definitive numbers of what the cost would be so we know more certainly what kind of, I won't call it you know, financial considerations is what it is, uh, we're entering into in terms of developing uh, a contract um, uh, that meets the expectations of um, and the guy and the expectations of the city of Baconia uh, going forward. So while I'm not saying 30,000 bucks a year at a $9,000 figure or $33,000 a year at a $100,000 figure is not something that's unacceptable to me. I'm simply saying, give me some numbers that are a little more um, definitive. Uh, they don't have to be precise. And I'm not asking for precision, but I am asking for something more definitive. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Felch has his hand up. Councillor Felch, you're acknowledged. Yes. Um, I actually like to get this move forward a little bit. I mean, I, I sent out the contract that the Mount Washington has with uh, the city to all the councillors. And I don't see there's why there isn't any way we couldn't model this completely the same way we did with the Mount Washington. Um, I'd like to see it move forward with the city manager talking to legal and, and see what they agree with, what needs to be changed. I mean, it has to go through legal, I believe, before any of this can actually happen. 
Thank you, Con Councilor Felch. Councilor Cheney has his hand up. Councilor Cheney, you're acknowledged. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention uh, before, I'd also like to see uh, an estimate of the cost for the other repairs or the other upgrades to the uh, to the city docks uh, that the dive is suggesting they'll run uh, uh, fundraisers for. Uh, I, I'd like to have some idea uh, also about uh, apparently, they've had somebody review what could be done. I would hope they could give us uh, a, a back of the book estimate of what it might cost to do those things um, before we before we uh, go too much further. I'd like to see that. But thank you. Not necessarily as an element of the lease, but something just. Um, uh, just for edification. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. just for clarification, uh, yes. No other councils have their hand up. Yes, Glenn, okay. I do, Glenn. Councilor Hamill, you're acknowledged. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just reiterate some of the things that uh, Councilor Cheney said that I agree with. Um, I am concerned uh, about the renovation to the beach. Uh, the Drawings indicate that the renovation will bring the beach uh, a lot closer to the uh, the dock space. Uh, they're trying to get it back to its original uh, dimensions. Uh, so I'd, I'd be curious uh, to find out about how the props would affect that if, if indeed the beach gets over to that part. Uh, and, and also on the uh, reconstruction of what's uh, going to be there uh, possibly in the future, um, you know, I, I agree. We we'll need to find out how much that would be, um, so I think that would make a, a, a big difference. The, um, the, the improvement, uh, you know, to have it a, a public-private uh, deal, you know, I, I agree with it. But I think there has to be a benefit to the taxpayers uh, on this also. Uh, so. You know, I'm having a hard time finding uh, the benefit of the taxpayers if some of the d existing dock is not renovated. So those are some of my concerns. I also agree with the, the uh, liability aspect of it in the ADA. Uh, and also, uh, I think it needs to be uh, part of this agreement, it needs to be written down that they will abide by the city ordinances also, um, you know, as far as sound and all that kind of thing. Uh, in the hours of expectation, because I noticed they put down here that there is some exceptions. Uh, I know uh, fireworks last a little longer or some other events, but uh, I think it really needs to be spelled out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamill. Uh, City Manager would like to speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I understand all the concerns that you brought forth, just to go uh, and look at the timeline. You tabled this two weeks ago. Uh, the applicants or, or the folks from the dive heard exactly what your concerns were. There was no staff guidance. The mayor and I, as he mentioned, met for almost an hour on a Zoom conference call Friday of last week or two weeks ago. They got us a document just in time for publication in your agenda on Thursday. And rather than have legal go through and try to create a document until if and when we knew there was consensus from the council to uh, not only take these, this framework, but your additional guidance and create a, a legal document with it. And that's why you don't have it because it would have been, you know, basically just an exercise that we would go back and be reworking again based on what you're providing tonight. So absolutely, we will be working with legal counsel if there's consensus to do so tonight. We will make sure uh, that we address all the items you brought up and a couple of additional ones. Uh, in addition, our insurance carrier Primex will weigh in on what the appropriate um, you know, dollar amounts um, should be, and possibly even come down and do an assessment of, of the dock space. Because I know when the mayor and I walked, just we thought maybe there needs to be an extra, you know, level of, of railing or something so that folks coming off uh, in the dark, um, you know, had a little extra uh, safety measure down there. So all of that will be done. And if there is consensus to do so, then that finished document um, after negotiated would certainly come back before the council for any action. Mr. Thank Mayor, you, Con Mr. Myers. 
Uh, Councilors Lipman and Felch both have their hands up. Councilor Lipman, you're acknowledged. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciate the um, remarks that you made, Mayor, and um, Councilor Cheney, Councilor Hamill, um, considerations. Um, I'd add to that list um, the, you know, is the engineering um, that's behind this, uh, um, you know, accurate with respect to both uh, what's required and the cost. But I think, you know, essentially what the manager is saying is he's get some, getting some direction as to what he needs to work on with legal to sort of firm up the, an agreement, which I'm supportive of being able to get to that end point, assuming the, the city's adequately protected. Thank you, Councilor Littman. Councilor Felch, are you still there? Yes, I am. Um, I'd actually like to make a motion to move this forward with the city manager and legal and come up with an agreement. Is there a second to Councilor Felch's motion? So made by Councilor Haynes. Any further discussion? Yes, Mayor, I got Councilor cut Littman. off. Sorry. I got cut off again by video, I'm, I'm sorry. I was in the middle of a statement and no. I guess I lost contact. <laughs> okay, uh, well, there, uh, there is a motion on the table uh, by Councillor Felch, seconded by Councillor Haynes to authorize the city manager to begin working on a formal lease agreement with the, with the dive. But uh, please go ahead and, and I get, this is discussion so you, you, you can yes. discuss. So I, I, I was saying I agreed with the sentiments of, of yourself, Mayor, and the issues that have been raised. In addition, I would be supportive of, of um, coming to an agreement, but I think some there's additional due diligence around the, the engineering and the cost estimates here that, that are underlying the agreement and that uh, the motion is to go forward and do additional work um, to prepare the document. I'm not sure I would support earlier what I heard of Councillor Felch of saying something on the same terms that we have with the Mount Washington, but uh, more along the lines what you had outlined there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Littman. I, I heard that you agreed with me and unplugged you immediately. I didn't want to hear any more. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Okay, so the motion. <laughs> The motion is on the table. I'm is, sorry. There, is there any further discussion? Hearing on seeing that, I'd ask the city clerk to call the roll. Councilor Cheney. Yes. Councilor Bounds. Yes. Councilor Lipman. Yes. Councilor Haynes. Yes. Councilor Hamill. Yes. Councilor Felt. Yes. Six votes in the affirmative, the motion passes and it's in the court of the city manager right now. Brings us to 22, council comments. Councilor Cheney. <laughs> nope, <laughs> no comments. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do have one comment. Will you do something about barbershops getting open? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Bounds is going to give me a haircut after the meeting tonight, so I think we're on World Square. <laughs> How are you going to mention, manage your uh, six feet of separation? <laughs> Long shears. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, any other uh, councillor comments? Seeing none, uh, I'd like to move to adjourn uh, City Council meeting of April 27, 2020. I want to thank the staff here at City Hall and their help in putting this together. It's very challenging with all this technology, but thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Smith and uh, Ms. Hebert. So, 919, that's a wrap. Yeah.